Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service this morning. A welcome to, to those of you who are joining us from wh wherever you may be today. We, we are thankful that you've chosen to, to tune into our service this morning. This morning, the church is uh, dressed uh, round about with, with um, fishing nets and, and creels and anchors and, and lifeboats and other boats. All manner of things, because of course, being a, a fishing town, then the main harvest that we have is a harvest of the sea. And so we come here to give thanks to God for all that he provides for us in every way. And also, at the close of our service this morning, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. And if you love the Lord, then you will be welcome to join us at his table. The psalmist writes, How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Let's worship God together and sing to his praise and his glory the first hymn, on your order of service, oh sorry, on your screens, we plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land.
Let's pray together. Let's all pray. God our Father, as we gather this morning, we come to give you thanks for this new time. We come to thank you for this harvest time when, when we remember all that you provide for us for every day. You provide in abundance for us. You have taught us the prayer which says, give us this day our daily bread. Yet you provide for each one of us a, a, a banquet from which we might indeed feast, a storehouse of your grace. And we thank you for that, Lord, for your generosity towards us, for the way in which you seek to reach into our hearts and into our lives to make us your very own. And as we come to worship you today in spirit and in truth, so we earnestly pray that you would reach out to touch our hearts and our lives and bring to each one of us a greater understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you look upon us this morning, Lord, you can see the things in our lives that would separate us from you. You can see our sins that stand between us and you. And so we ask this day that in your goodness and grace, you would indeed reach into our lives that we might be aware of the sins of our, our, our lives and, and repent of them and turn away from them and turn afresh to you for you and you alone are able to cleanse us with your forgiving power. So Lord God, help us this day to repent of anything and everything that stands between us and you our sins, our secret sins, are no secret to you. Open up our hearts and our eyes and our understanding that we might know the, the fullness of your love and truth and grace, cleansing and renewing us. And as you fill us with your love and your truth, give us the desire to serve you in every way. Father, we are mindful at this time of the continued rise of coronavirus. We read of, of thousands of people every day across the United Kingdom being infected, hundreds and hundreds of people across Scotland. And Lord, we don't panic. We are not we are not in a state of panic, but we are calling out to you, Lord, to ask that you would open up the hearts and minds of the people of this land, that they may understand the need to be cautious and careful at this time. Lord God, we remember all those working in intensive care units and all those working in A&E and in, in, in other parts of the health service having to come into contact with this illness. We think of carers in nursing homes and home carers as well. And Lord, we pray that you would cover them with your, your, your grace and your goodness. And we pray that all might be kept safe. Lord, we, we pray that there will not be the, the large number of deaths that there were earlier this year, but that is not in our gift. Yet it's for all of us to play our part and to heed the rules that are laid before us. So help us to do that without grumbling, without moaning. Help us instead simply to do what is right. Lord God, we are mindful also of those who are working in our shops and vulnerable situations. We think of our funeral director, Robert Mackey, and his staff as they too find themselves 
back in the midst of this. So we pray that you will protect them and us. And we pray for the life and the witness of the church, so curtailed at this time. But we thank you, Lord, that we can take our services onto the, the, the internet so that many others can, can listen and be a part of worship here. And we pray for your blessing on them and we give you thanks for the opportunity that this has brought to us. Now, Lord, we are mindful of those who are ill also at this time with other illnesses, some waiting for hospital appointments and treatments that they've not been able to get. And we pray for them and we remember all our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in need at this time. And we pray for those who are bereaved at this time also, that they too might know your peace and your love. We remember the children of the church, Lord, and we pray for them. We pray for family life and for, for health and for happiness for each and every one in your name. And Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, in churches and meeting halls, all over this town and beyond, wherever your word is sent forth in truth, may your word be blessed to the hearts of all who hear. Now, Lord, we would ask that you would abide with us, that you would be at the very heart and centre of our worship today. Be in all that we would do, and all that we would say, be with us as we sing your praises, as we read your word and share that word, as we come to this table. Prepare us to meet with you. In the silence now, we would bring our own prayers and petitions to you. Lord, you hear all our prayers whispered and our hearts spoken out loud. Hear these, for we ask them in Jesus' name. We pray for those who guard us and keep us, those who are in authority over us. May they all be guided by you and not by the things of men. For we would ask all of this in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray together as one family and to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> we turn now to God's word. And our scripture reading this morning is taken from the New Testament. This morning we read from 2 Corinthians at chapter 9 and we read from verse 1. 2 Corinthians Chapter 9, reading from verse 1. Hear the word of God. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the saints, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you in Achaia, were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready, as I said you would be. For if any Macedonian comes with me and finds you unprepared, we not to say anything about you 
would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God because of the service by which you have proved yourselves. Men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading from his word and to his name be all glory and praise. We would sing the hymn before the sermon, Come, ye thankful people, come. And the words will be on your screen.
Let's pray together. God our Father, as we turn our thoughts now to your word, so we pray that you would open up this word to us today. Open it up so that we can understand it and understand your will and your purpose. Lord, we thank you for the many ways in which you reveal yourself to us through the, the, the work of the gospel. Send your truth this day and open our hearts that we might know you in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we, we read from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. We read the whole of the passage. Um, uh, it's always important, uh, um, um, as I say on many occasions, to put the scripture into its context. It's not good enough just to lift bits of it out. It's to be put in its context so that we can understand what's being said here. Now in the opening part of this, there's talk about a gift, there's talk about a, 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 a gift being given to another church. And, and of course, that's an important thing that we should always be willing to give to the work of the gospel, wherever it might be. But this morning, I want us to consider particularly, the, the, from verse 6 onwards, I'll read verse 6. It says, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, it's important as we speak here today that we make a distinction that it could be thought that this gift and the idea of reaping and giving and, and, and so on and so forth is all to do with the amount of, of money that we, we might give to the church or put in the plate, which is a matter for each individual and not a matter for me or anyone else to comment on. But that's not what this is speaking about. It's speaking about harvest, about a time of sowing and a time of reaping. So it's the reaping part. The seeds have been sown and now is the time here to gather in the, the, the outcome, the, the crop that's been produced. As I said at the head of the service, the church is decorated this morning with, with fishing nets and boats and, and, and creels and anchors and, and, sh and ships' lamps and you name it, it's here along with an abundance of flowers reminding us of the beauty of the earth, reminding us of the abundance that God is ever willing to give to us. Because if there's one thing that we know, we know that God's goodness and grace is ever, ever willing to assist us and carry us through. Right at the start of the service as you were waiting for the service um, to, to begin. Robert, our organist, was playing Great is Thy Faithfulness. He'll be impressed that I was able to tell him that in the middle of this service this morning. And as he played that, I thought about how important it is as we consider the harvest today, consider all that God has given to us and consider what God expects from us how it's important to remember that faithfulness of God. Even in these days where perhaps it's hard to see good things around with the, the continued rise in coronavirus and across the whole of the country, indeed the whole of Europe, still we are conscious of the faithfulness of God who never ceases to let us down or let us go, but whose outstretched hand ever holds us up and keeps us close to him. Now this passage challenges us. This verse 6 is a challenge 
to each and every one of us because it challenges us in how we live our lives. It challenges us in how we respond to God in our lives. I read it again. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. My, my father's grandfather was a gardener. And he grew roses. And I was a gardener in a, in a big house in the village where we lived. And he would grow and he would um, make, you know, bring about new roses that, that, that would s smell nice or sit up straight and all this kind of thing. And you'll all know that none of that rubbed onto me because you really wouldn't want me to be looking after any of your plants in any way. But he, he loved that. And, and my, my granda Macmillan was the same. He loved out in the garden and, and was ever good at planting and bringing things on and so on and so forth. And I remember and taking me down into his wee greenhouse bit that he had. It was a wee lean-to built of wood and glass at the back of the house. And he says, come on, I'll show you how to get these seeds. So he poured a wee packet of seeds into my hand. He says, now just put them in here so you'll know that I just went like that. And all the seeds went into one, one wee bit. And he said, well, we'll just see how they get on. And of course they didn't get on because there were that many of them. They were that choked that in fact they, there was no growth in them. They, they barely came away. But where he had sprinkled them, where he had sown them, where he had spread them across, then they began to shoot and flower and so on. And so at the end of the day, when they were big enough and they were taken out and put in a cold frame and from the cold frame out into the garden, the whole front and back garden was a wash of colour with these small packets of seed that had been sown and allowed to grow and then at the end could be reaped an elderly man who lived next door to us in the village, he devoted his whole back garden to growing large croissants the size of a football. And, and you know, people would come to him um, and every year throughout the whole of the summer, the church always had big vases of croissants because he would sell them for five shillings a dozen. They, I'm showing my age now. For, for 25 pence for a dozen of these big giant croissants and folk would go and buy them from him and put them in and he spent the money on new plants and things what he was needing sowing and reaping not taking for himself but sowing and reaping and giving back to others now this passage this verse right at the start of, of um, uh, at verse 6 whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly has a great message for us because not only is it speaking about physically planting and so on and so forth but it's about our Christian life it's about what we do with the faith that is within us it's about whether or not we are willing to speak the name of Jesus Christ and spread that name abroad or whether or not we are perhaps ashamed of that name in some way and so we want to be silent about it perhaps it's not shame perhaps it's we feel ill-equipped ill-equipped to speak about Jesus to say anything about him but you know the greatest thing that we can ever say about Jesus Christ is that he is our Lord and our Savior that's the greatest thing that we can confess because by saying those words we show ourselves 
to belong to him. And in the belonging and in the saying of those words, we are casting the seed of faith far and wide. I was speaking this afternoon to one of the, the deacons in the church and, and remarking how when we consider our congregation here and when we consider um, in, in over the years how our church, thanks be to God, has grown in number and, and, and in, in fellowship and in faith and trust of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we consider all that God has done, none of us, including me, thought for a moment that this morning and any morning the service from this church would be reaching people's houses wherever you're watching today. None of us thought that. Indeed, at the start of the pandemic, we did not have the equipment that would allow us to do that. And yet within a week, it was made available. And recently made available in, a, in an even greater way. And so all the time, all the time that we are thinking and, and looking at, at, at how we can send the message forth, God has a plan and a purpose because suddenly the message of the gospel is being sent out to places that we could never hope to reach into the lives of people that we, we don't know, although many of them are getting in contact by email and, and telling us how much they're enjoying being part of our services on a Sunday morning. And we are thankful to God for that. Not for our sake. Not for the sake of the congregational church here in Peterhead. But we're thankful to God for their sake. That the Lord's blessing them in that way. And is also blessing us. What we sow. We can also reap. So if we sow strongly. The message of the gospel then that means that we will have a harvest to bring home. A harvest of souls for the Lord Jesus Christ because that is the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to send forth the message of truth to the saving of souls. Not everyone would agree with that statement because some folks will think that there's no need to be saved. But of course there's a need to be in Christ. When we use language like that, when we speak about being saved, what is it that we're talking about? We're talking about being born again. We're talking about the start of a new life in Jesus Christ, where our old life comes to an end because we accept the Saviour into our hearts and into our lives and the moment that we accept Jesus Christ into our lives, our lives change. And if they don't change, then that means that maybe we're kidding ourselves on. Because we should all be changed by the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot belong to him and still have our foot firmly planted in the things of the world. We either belong to Christ or we do not belong to him. In every way, this scripture, this verse, seeks to remind us of the need to spend our lives on Jesus Christ. That whatever, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Spiritual sowing, showing an abundance, showing that, that what the Lord has chosen to give, he will give in abundance to us. We speak of abundant grace. We speak of the, 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 the um, never-ending love of Jesus Christ. We speak about the everlasting arms. All these things that go on and on and on beyond our comprehension. And here we're being reminded for you and I that we have a task to sow generously so that a harvest might be reaped. 
a harvest of the souls of men and women and children so that they might be enlightened by the truth that is Jesus Christ. We live in a world today where everyone believes that they should be self-sufficient. We live in a world today where people are interested in many places only in themselves and what they can get for themselves. And the scripture takes that message that the world has and it turns it upside down and inside out and it says so generously so that you can reap generously. Give out the message of truth. Show that you belong to Christ. Live the Christian life so that in every way it becomes absolutely visible to everyone. It says in verse 7, Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, we're often told in churches in Scotland that we're not very cheery looking, that we've usually got doer faces as we're sitting in the pews. And, you know, that doesn't mean that our hearts are not jumping within us. Perhaps it is the case that we take seriously the worship of God and the things of God, but that does not mean that within our being the name of Jesus Christ does not set our souls on fire and our hearts, our hearts leaping within us. Because the truth is, it is not about us being happy or contented. It is about us serving the Savior, giving to him everything that we can. Not because I say that, or anyone else says that, but because of your love for Jesus Christ, that you have a desire to give more and more and more of yourself to him. That is sowing generously, giving more and more, not at all about what you put in the plate, what you put in your envelope, what you give in your gift aid or whatever it is. Forget that for a moment or two. Forget that. Think about your relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about what you and I give back to God for all that he has given to us and for us. We're not compelled to give. We're not told, give that, give that, give this. Instead, we are to make up our own minds. So the onus is on you and me about how much of our lives we are willing to give back to God. It has to be a fitting portion, however. Because, you know, Jesus Christ gave everything for you and me. He didn't die in part. He died in whole. He didn't give of his blood in part. It was shed freely to wash our sins away. Placed in the borrowed tomb. Raised out of that tomb and standing in our midst at this very moment wherever two or three are gathered in my name there am I in the midst of them and maybe as I say that maybe you're sitting in your living room or, or wherever you might be this morning and you're the only person there but know this we are united as brothers and sisters in Christ and there's none of us alone for the Saviour is constantly with us, seeking to guide us and lead us if we put our trust in him. In a few moments, we're going to come to this table. 
At this table, we'll partake of bread and wine. We'll come not because we've any right to come, but because we're bid to come. We come because Christ commands us to come. We don't come because if we take the bread and drink the wine, our sins will be washed away. That's not the place to have your sins washed away. The place for having your sins washed away is at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. Crying out to him, he will cleanse your sin if you truly seek to repent. But here, here is the place where we are fed, where the harvest is, where the fruit is, where the bread and the wine are brought together to nurture, to feed us, and to send us forward in faith and hope and trust. The scripture says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Where do you want to be in relation to that? Where would you want to be in relation to your your faith and your trust? in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you strong for him today? As strong as you can be. That's what we're being asked to be, to be strong for Christ, so that when we speak of him, when we share him, when we sit down in our homes and pray, when we, when we get up and go out and talk of him, that the name of Christ is sent forth and that others believe upon that name to the saving of their souls. That's not a task for the minister and the deacons. That's a task for each and every one of us who calls ourselves a Christian, who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we come to this table today, we don't come in doubt We come believing. We come trusting. We come waiting on the Saviour to satisfy our needs. Each one of us has the opportunity to satisfy the needs of others by sharing forth the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, not sowing sparingly and reaping sparingly, but sowing generously, giving of our all that many might hear the name of Jesus and be saved. Shall we pray together? God our Father, we thank you that your word promises a harvest of souls. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us to work in the fields of this world, to work in the fields of life, to help spread forth and send forth the truth of the gospel. Help us this day to be willing participants in the spread of the good news, for we would ask it all, In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Our communion hymn, is on your screen, Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts.
the Apostle Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. And a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognising the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray together. God our Father, as we attend now to your table, we thank you that you have called each one of us to this place and that in your goodness and grace you seek to feed us in accordance with your will. Lord, we are not worthy to come, yet you have bid us come, and so in obedience we do come to wait upon you. We pray, Lord, for those who will partake of this today, not only in this fellowship, but in other fellowships across this world. May all who break bread and drink wine this day know your blessing, your love, your grace dwelling within them. May we all be satisfied in Christ. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take this and eat it. For this means the body of Christ which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of him. This cup stands for the new relationship in the blood of Christ. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of him. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, shall we pray together. God our Father, we thank you that by your grace we, each one of us, have been fed by you. Restore us, renew us, and send us forth from this place. Send us forth that we might indeed go forth to serve you in this land, in this world. Help us 
to sow generously and reap generously of the truth of Jesus Christ. For we ask it all in his name. Amen. Our closing hymn uh, for the morning, sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide, and the dewy eve, and the words are on your screen. Spirit rest upon you and upon your homes, upon all whom you love in this place and elsewhere, this day and for evermore. <laughs>